I got this little hen here. She's one of our olive eggers. As long as I'm petting her, she's calm. She's okay. I was petting her leg like this, and she just kind of fell into a deep sleep. If I quit, she tries to jump right up and run away. We had to catch her because she has developed the habit of jumping up on top of the parrot cages, and we just can't have that. So I'm going to have to trim her wing feathers. I'm going to hold her, her legs, get my fingers out here so they can be of use. Pull the wing out, hold it like this. This is not a how-to tutorial. This is just how I'm going to do it. These are the primary flight feathers. These are the secondary flight feathers back here. These, these little feathers here, these are called the wing covert, C-O-V-E-R-T. So I'm going to cut the primary flight feathers right at the length where the coverts end. And Catherine's filming for me and she's gathering up all of the, the feathers as they, they fall. She's going to use them in an art project, I'm sure. How did you know? Well, I know you very well, don't I? I need you to give me a headband. I'm going to make a... Okay. Bull, a so I turned, I turned her over and now I'm able to hold, hold it out like this. Again, these are the primary flight feathers. These are the secondary flight feathers. If you think about a, a chicken wing from KFC that you eat, this little end is called the pinion. That's where all the little finger bones are. There's not much meat in there to eat, so we don't really eat that. The second piece, that's called the flat. You know, when you're eating a, bar a buffalo chicken wing or a barbecue chicken wing, the flat. And then the drumette is here. This is the shoulder. This is the elbow. This is the wrist. These are the fingers. Same as on a person. The lower part, the forearm, has two bones in it. And then the upper part has one bone. So what you're doing is you're going to trim the feathers that grow off of the little fingery end. It's it's very flexible, you see. Don't break it. Uh, it it's, it's not going to break. It, it does that on purpose. I know, but I just don't want you to hold her. Uh, I'm not going to hurt her, baby. So I'm going to trim these feathers. Well, they're going on the top of the wings, so I can't really catch them. How about that? Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. And so now she's grounded. She can't fly anymore. These are, uh, they, they came, well, I bought them from my local feed store. They came from Mount Healthy Hatchery. That's where my local uh, mom and pop family feed store, uh, Roland and Peggy are their, the, the names of the mom and the pop. Hold the camera steady, sweetie. I can't do that. We use two hands. Um, they order these chickens from Mount Healthy, and they are a first-generation cross between a Blue Americana and a Blue Copper Marin, and they lay beautiful bl dark blue and green eggs, olive-colored eggs, and I have black ones and I have blue ones, and I absolutely love them. They lay eggs every single day, big, huge, beautiful eggs. I don't know about feed conversion. They live here for free. I don't buy layer pellets for them. They eat whatever the parrots drop to the ground. Um, like I said, they live here for free. They just clean up all the seeds that the parrots waste, the pellets and everything, sprouts, vegetables, whatever it may be. And so I don't know about feed conversion. I'm sure that a white legger is going to lay more eggs for less feed. But these girls are just wonderful and I love them and I highly recommend them. And there she is, no worse for the wear. You know, most of our hens, they sleep in these nesting boxes. But she had decided she wanted to sleep up on top of the bird cage. That is Jolly in front. He's a 
grizzled Polish rooster. He lives with the alabaggers. And then let me zoom back over here. There's Toad. He's a rumpus naked neck. There he is. He's one of the roosters with the alabaggers. It's getting to be about golden hour, late in the evening. I'm about to go inside. Daniela is cooking supper. You hear that? You hear that? That odd sound? That was a uh, Taraco blueberry. So there are these two. And look, this is that scarlet macaw that got loose and flew around the yard and scared me and tried to decapitate me and take my soul. Isn't he beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah? What is it? Huh? What is it? What have you got to say? Here in this little area, we have kind of a ragtag group of chickens. We have a bantam uh, gold lace Polish hen, a full-size gold lace Polish hen, a frizzled toll-bunt rooster, and then a couple of the uh, olive eggers have chosen to stay in here with them. And they seem to be pretty happy. They are underneath Indian ringnecks. I have, so their purse is falling down. Oh no, I'll get that fixed tomorrow maybe. It's another day, isn't it? I have three pairs on this end of the building and then five pairs down on the next section. Let's take a look. Now this is the mother to those uh, mystery conures that I am hand feeding. She is a hybrid conure, she's what I call a day-day conure, um, not just because of my last name either, but I think she's a beautiful bird. I would not purposefully breed hybrids, but she's here, and so I have her paired with the male who didn't have a mate, and that's, that's what we have done, little Frankenstein birds. Will it not focus on her? She's a turquoise violet Indian ring neck. Beautiful, beautiful little bird. This guy, he is almost pure white. He is a blue paladino Indian ring neck parrot. The light shining through from the back makes it very difficult to record in here. Let's keep looking. We have a very handsome blue opaline Quaker parrot. He has a wife coming from Texas next month. Isn't he adorable?
And I know they just look like silhouettes, but these are my baby ring necks I cut from last year. I have a blue palette, a beautiful turquoise, and a this guy has a turquoise violet. Here's Blueberry Acharaco. He was the one that was making those funny sounds when we were down there by the macaws. He's already had his fruit for the day, so he's not real hungry. But he's a funny looking bird, isn't he? Hey, there you go. I love you. I love you. Let's go see Forrest, okay? There's old man Forrest. He is 20 years old this year. He turned 20 in March. There he is. Hey, Forrest. We love you. We love you. You're a grumpy old man, aren't you? Just like your daddy. Just like me. And here are those white-crested blue Polish chicks doing fantastic out here.